What's up guys, this is the High Tech Redneck, and I want to give you guys a quick little review of my new everyday knife. For those who don't know, this is a Benchmade Model 300, and uh, it's a controversial knife if you look online, but I absolutely love it. Um, I've seen a lot of people who absolutely hate it, and I think it's pretty funny. Uh, I don't understand why they hate it, but they do. So here is uh, my little rundown of the knife and what I've done to it so far. Now, this knife is about $150, which is like, whoa. Um, I'm used to paying uh, anything from $20 to $60 for a decent knife. And I'm used to beating the crap out of them, honestly. I, I'm, I'm really hard on a knife. I break knives. Like this little guy here was one of my favorite everyday knives for a long time until the spring broke. And it was a really good lockback, really slim design, really, you know, fits in the hand good, really simple, easy to carry. But this was a long time ago, and this is a heck of an upgrade from there. So um, I'm not here to review the knife and run you down all the specs, but I will tell you it's an extremely good knife. It is uh, The blade here is a little bit taller than I would like it to be in some cases, but at the same time, it's a very thick blade stock, and it's a flat grind, saber grind, whatever you want to call that. And it's a really well-designed blade. Um, it's got a little more upsweep than I like here at the tip. I like a drop point to come down a little lower, but that's the design of the knife, and it functions great. I love it. It's just not quite as easy to sharpen as, as, as a sharper drop point. Um, the handle is pretty thick on it right here, but I do like a palm-filling knife. As you can see from some of my old knives, like the Kershaw Black Horse 2, big, huge, fat knife. It's even heavier. It's a lock back, so it's harder to use. But it's also very ergonomic. It also feels great in the hand. It's a nice thick blade. It made a pretty decent steel, 1060A, which was pretty good for 15 years ago when this was made. Um, and this is a hollow grind, so not as strong. But, you know, this knife is basically a precursor to something like this. And uh, I prefer this much more. It's a tip-down pocket clip. I, ha I carry it right-handed, but I have it set up for a lefty because it fits in my pocket better. That's one of the small little things I do different than a lot of people that I see. Um, my first problem that I had, as soon as this knife was given to me, I realized it does not go into your pocket easily. At first, I thought it was these G10 scales and the grip, and then I realized this grip is not that grippy. It's not a problem with that. It's a problem with the pocket clip itself. So if you look right here, you'll see the tip of this pocket clip is angled upward a little bit. That's because I had to bend it. At first, this little flat tip right here at the end was bent downwards, and it would grab on the fabric of the pocket as soon as it slid over the lip of the pocket, and it would not go down smoothly. You'd have to use both hands to get into, into your pocket. So I took my handy-dandy no-name multi-tool, the indestructible thing, and I stuck it under the edge of this, just like so, gripped it really hard, and bend it upwards about five or six different times until I had an angle that was comfortable. Now it slides in in it, in and out of my pocket extremely easily. I love that. This axis lock. Um, let's talk about that for a second. I am a huge fan of the axis lock as of the moment I received this knife. Um, this thing is extremely smooth. If you've never handled one, you need to handle one because you don't understand them until you feel them in your hand. It's like glass. You just pull this thing back and touch the blade and it closes. Just poof. And it's down. It actually bounced out a little bit, if you saw. It just, boom. It's so perfect. And to flip it out, it's just one smooth motion. Just There's no spring assist in this. It's manual knife. I've seen a lot of people gripe about this online because it doesn't come out fast enough and... If you ask me, those guys are using spring-assisted knives, and they're used to just barely touching a knife and have it try to fly out of their hand across the room. I don't like that kind of knife. You don't need a spring in a knife, especially when it's that smooth. And, I mean, if you put a little bit of mass into this thing and, uh, and really flick on it, you can get a really fast uh, open with this. Um, the flipper comes around and makes a hand guard with some jimping on the back of it, it's fairly sharp, small jimping, which is really nice. It's uh, got some really aggressive jimping right here on the back of the blade, and it is a great little backup tactical knife. I'm not going to say you carry this to, you know, Vietnam and kill all the commies or whatever, but if you, if you were out there and you lost your K-Bar, this would be what I would want as a backup. 
uh, definitely, because it serves a great in a utility role. Very thick, strong, reliable blade. It's 154 cm, which has really, really impressed me. I've never had a super steel knife before, and this thing, it took me days to sharpen it correctly, to reprofile it all and get it right. You can see the edge is not quite a mirror polish. If I zoom in on it, and I'm not going to, but if you look at it really closely, you can still see some sharpening scratches on the edge, but at the same time, this thing takes a polish like you wouldn't believe. And it gets sharper than, than you would believe, and it stays sharper than you would believe. Now, my next modification was I noticed here on this underside where your index finger crosses in this grip was too wide. And it was grabbing and pinching on my hands when I would use it. So I took my other multi-tool, the other no-name indestructible multi-tool, with a great little file on it, and I filed these scales down. Now, let me use my pointer here. You'll see that I had problems right here, most obviously. This right here used to be a jutted out piece that looked like this before I filed it. Now, I filed this up, but then the, I had another problem with this piece right here in this corner being too tight. Because to my hands, it feels like this flipper and this little edge right here are a little bit far back. Um, it just felt a little bit cramped to me. And I filed, I rounded out all of this right here, and then I took a lot of this off right here and then did the same thing on the other side as you can see and now it carries in my hand or it holds in my hand very well in a normal cutting grip and in all kinds of grips basically um, the only other little modification I've done here is where my when I hold this knife and squeeze my hands up on it for slicing control or whatever if I'm trying to get close to what I'm working with my middle finger has a tendency to come right here on this point and this point had the same problem, being just a little too wide, a little too sharp. So I rounded this off a little bit. You can't even really see where I rounded it. But I did radius both sides of this just a little bit for that finger, for that application. Um, another thing, I heard a, a guy gripe about this pocket clip digging into his palm. And if I use this knife left-handed, you can see the back side right here of this pocket clip does dig into your palm. So... I solved that problem without knowing I solved it by putting the pocket clip on for a lefty. Now, some people will gripe, oh, what if the blade deploys in your pocket? I've never had a blade deploy in my pocket. And if it does, I'm a grown man. I've been carrying razor sharp knives for a long time, and I think I know how to handle that. Unless I'm in, you know, a life or death situation, then I don't see it as ever being a problem. And I don't get into a whole lot of life or death situations, to, to be honest. So, um, the, the flat grind on this knife is a great angle. The blade profile is great, as far as I'm concerned. The axis lock is absolutely amazing. It blows my mind. The flipper, um, no problems with the flipper. It's decent. I don't have a problem with it. When I first got this knife, it was it was sticky, and I had to I had to do a wave motion with my hand like that to open it, or it wouldn't open all the way. I, th I thought, man, this is a slow flipper. It's not that impressive. It, it's 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 a cool knife. It's a really good knife, but it doesn't open that well. And then I lubricated it, and uh, <laughs> as soon as I lubricated it, all kinds of junk came out from around this area on the inside. Ended up with all kinds of black grime all around here on the blade and all on the underside. And I took some Q-tips and got in there and cleaned everything out really good. And since then, it's been about a week, a week and a half since I've lubricated it, and it's still super fast. I don't have to make any kind of wave motion with my hand. I just hold it still and flick, and that didn't quite open, but <laughs> yeah, that's always what happens when you turn the camera on. There you go. So, it's a really great knife. Uh, is it worth $150? Absolutely. If you've never tried one of these, try one. Uh, you know, go to a go to a blade dealer, a Benchmade dealer, and get one in your hands because these things are truly impressive. Um, some people gripe because it's a little heavy. They say it's, it's about 4.8 ounces somewhere around there. Well, this guy right here, I just did a review on this, this old Remington Fast, is smaller. And with these big stainless steel uh, handles, this is over 5 ounces. And this guy was small and comfortable for years in my pocket at 5 ounces. It did not bother me. And this guy, being even lighter, um, it's much bigger, and the bulk of it is, is the, the problem in the pocket, is, is the bulk. But once you get used to it after 3 hours, um, you love it. You really do. You will love this knife. And the more you use it, the, the harder you use it, the more you'll love it. I, I've beaten the crap out of it in testing. I've really used this knife. I'm thoroughly impressed. And I look forward to carrying this one for 20 years. Try it out, guys.